Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2019 Chevrolet Silverado. It's a half ton pickup. Uh, it has the Model 8L90 transmission in it. And uh, this transmission is doing some shuttering on just about every shift. And it's a common problem with the GM transmissions. We're going to resolve that problem today. It's, it's mostly all fluid related. Um, I, I use the Amsoil synthetic uh, transmission fluid and it eliminates the problem altogether. I've done several of these and uh, the customer has been very, very pleased with the results on it. Um, I'm going to give you a list of things here that we need to start this. First thing is the transmission filter. And there's the GM part number right here. Next item is the uh, transmission pan gasket. And this vehicle has about 62,000 miles on it. Um, you, this is a reusable gasket. It's a silicone with a, a metal uh, sandwich in between it. And uh, they can be reused. If you live in an area where they don't use a lot of road salt, um, you could easily reuse it as long as you're under maybe 100, 125,000 miles. Uh, you get much over that, I would, I would suggest replacing it. But I've got one here, we're going to replace it. But here's the part number right here. And then the other thing that we're going to be doing <clears throat> This has a transmission uh, cooler thermostat on it, on the side of the transmission. It's on the driver's side towards the front. And I'll show you that when we get underneath. Uh, what we're going to do, going to this Amsoil fluid, uh, the cold flow on this Amsoil fluid is about 85 below zero. That's the point where it will pour out of a, a, a beaker that's been frozen down to 85 below Fahrenheit. So the transmission thermostat uh, starts opening at around, I think it's around 185 to 190 degrees. And that allows flow up to the cooler in front of the radiator. So what we're going to do is we're going to bypass that so we have flow up there all the time. Now, if you live in a northern climate and you're not going to use the Amsoil that will flow in the cold temps, then leave the, uh, the thermostat in place because the fluid, if you get to 10 or 15, 20 below, most of your substandard fluids are going to start turning to like molasses at that temperature and they won't flow. Uh, that can cause some issues with um, lubrication of bearings and so on. So that's just a, a, what will happen to the transmission if you use a fluid that will not flow in the cold. So the Amsoil fluid will definitely do, it's a chemical engineered synthetic. Um, another thing too on that, uh, on that thermostat, it's on the side of the transmission. And I've had some on uh, the 10 speed automatics and also on some of the 6 speed automatics where the, the uh, orientation of the snap ring and everything is, is towards the top. The thing's sort of cylindrical in shape. And uh, it'll, it'll have a snap ring to remove. I'll show you that when we get, to, get that far. I'll do a, an installation. But uh, sometimes you have to remove that thermostat. There's two lines that go into it. Uh, and also there's a, a gasket that goes between the body of the transmission and the, uh, the aluminum housing of that thermostat. And you'll need, uh, probably need new seals for that. So what I've done here is I've got the, the seal numbers right here. There's two different ones. There's uh, the one that requires two are the two O-rings that go on the lines. And then uh, the single one is the one that goes between the body of that uh, thermostat and the body of the transmission. So that will give you, right there is the pricing, current pricing on them, and also the part numbers. And up here I've got uh, some of the information for the transmission bolt torque, and I'll mention that when we go to put them back on. And then also there's a, a fluid level check plug on this one because there's no dipstick. And uh, we've got the level temp, we'll be checking that between 95 and 113 degrees. And then uh, the total fill on the transmission is 11.4 quarts. So that kind of gives you some idea how much fluid you want to have. Um, I would have at least three gallon on hand to do it. Uh, you can buy a little bit extra because it's the same fluid in your transfer case which only holds two quarts. So the transfer case fluid don't, uh, don't neglect that. It's easy to change. So, but the fluid we'll be using is the Amsoil low viscosity ATF. I'm going to do two things at once here. I'm showing you my fluidcapacity.com uh, homepage. And uh, what we'll do there is go to auto and light truck fluid lookup guide. And we'll go to auto light truck, click on that, and that will bring up uh, the years. Uh, so we're going to 2019, and we're going to Chevrolet, and we're doing the 1500 pickup. 
and flex fuel. Okay, so what this does, it brings up all the different uh, fluids that AMSOIL recommends for each cavity. Um, here's the engine oils that they offer. Uh, the best one that you can get is the Signature Series. It is a chemically engineered synthetic and uh, far outperforms all the other ones. Okay, so as we scroll down, it's going to give you the capacity here with filter 8 quarts. Okay, and I'm going to scroll down to our transmission. It's also got uh, your filters and the filters it requires as well. So as I go down here to the transmission, they're showing a 6L80 and an 8L90. Okay, we've got the 8L90 transmission we're working on. So if you go over here to the Specs Info button, click on that, it will give you the capacity. And you can see it's 11.4 quarts as a total fill with cooler. Okay, so as we do that, um, if you come down here, you can highlight the... Uh, the signature sheet is fuel efficient automatic tranny fluid. And we can go to the spec sheet. It'll uh, take you to this. And uh, as we scroll down, here's the uh, product data bulletin. Click on that, it's highlighted. And that'll take you to the data sheet for both the uh, signature series ATF and the signature series ATL. The blue one is the one we'll be using uh, the ATL for this truck. And this takes you through all the information about the fluid and also some test results from a taxi fleet in, uh, in I believe it's Las Vegas. And explains how well it uh, holds up the thermal breakdown from the heat because the heat is the biggest enemy of the transmission. And as you scroll down, it goes into the typical technical properties. <clears throat> now this is something you'll have a hard time finding on the other oils. You can go to mobile, you can go to Shell uh, Mobile, you can go to uh, any of the other oil companies out there. They don't put out much of this information here at all. So these tests, right here it says ASTM here in parentheses, and it gives the test number. ASTM is American Society of Testing Methods, and these are industry standard tests uh, that you use across the board to evaluate how well the oil performs in any given task. And there's no unimportant area that a lubricant offers as far as protection. So this is showing many different different areas. And there's more tests than this that uh, they do, but these are some of the more pertinent ones. The main one I wanted to look at was this pore point right here. And they read it out. The one in parentheses is Fahrenheit. So if we go over here to our ATL, the cold pour point where it will still pour out of a beaker is at 85 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, 65 below Celsius. And the ATF, uh, that flows to 63 below Fahrenheit, 53 below Celsius. So then we go also go into the uh, uh, specs of the fluid. And right here, we're going down to GM spec, Dexron HP, Dexron 6, ULV. Those are all the specs that it meets and actually exceeds them. Um, the fluid that uh, is in this uh, transmission that we're doing is this, the standard uh, fluid from GM, and we have a lot of shutter going on. This fluid takes care of that shutter completely. I've done this on numerous uh, transmissions, and it just knocks it in the head. It's, it's a fluid issue that's causing this shutter. Okay, so this goes into the cold fluidity, temperature fluidity. Um, the Signature Series ATF is wax-free. And it's extraordinary cold flow properties. I don't believe you're going to find a tranny fluid that flows any better than that at all out there. If any of them will even get close. Okay, so uh, the biggest thing is it's a chemically engineered synthetic. So it's, it's not derived from crude oil. So it doesn't have paraffin wax in it to thicken it up when it gets cold. So but this spec sheet here, you can go to uh, any of their products. I'm going to go back here and um, we can go and look at any of the engine oils. Let me go back one more. Okay, let's go to the engine oil right here. And we can highlight it. You can go to any of Amsoil's uh, lubricants and you can find that data sheet. Okay, so there's the product data bulletin. Okay, click on that. And it brings up all these signature series fluids, all the different uh, weights. And as we scroll down, it gives you all the information, some of the tests that have been done, wear tests and so on for turbos and all that. You'll not find a better oil for your engine. So as you scroll down, we're going to get to those same spec sheets. And this shows you 
uh, even more tests on the engine oils, like total base number. That's one that a lot of them don't even talk about. That's what neutralizes acids. Uh, most of them out there are going to start out at probably around 8 on the base number. Amzol puts more of that additive in so that you can run longer uh, drain intervals. Um, in order to neutralize acid, you have to beef up or, or buff up the total base number because that neutralizes acids in the oil. Okay, and then you get into, I'm going to go to the pour point and just show you some of the pour points on our oils. Like the 020, 63 below, and as you go across, you can see the temperature that they'll flow in the cold at. That's huge on cold startup if you live in, in the north country where it gets really cold. So this kind of gives you some idea of uh, how it performs on these uh, ASTM tests. And uh, there's a service life, applications, uh, compatibility, all the information about it is on these, these technical data sheets. So I just wanted to show you that so that uh, you have more information to make an informed decision about what oil best protects your investment. So this here kind of shows everything that you'll need for that uh, transmission. We're going to do the flush on it, so we're going to do a, a fluid uh, filter change and all that, clean out the pan, then we're going to do a flush, perform a flush, and I'll take you through that procedure. Okay, so we're underneath here, and uh, this is on the driver's side, front of the vehicle, and this thermostat is right here. Right here is your drive shaft going to the front differential. and. Uh, this one here is laying horizontal, so I can get at the snap ring up here and take it out. There's some of these that are oriented on uh, these GM trannies, some different ones that are, that are oriented with that snap ring pointing top or towards the top. It's kind of a bad deal because the road, if you live in a place where they use road salt, that stuff just gets in there and starts eating away right in here at that plug. There's an aluminum plug right there, aluminum cap, and there's no ring under that that seals it. <clears throat> so. If yours is vertical, you're going to have to take it off in order to get the uh, snap ring out and do it. Just take it out and do it on the bench. But this one here, I believe I can I can just do it um, right here, just taking out the snap ring. And if you do have to take it off, uh, the two O-rings I'm talking about go on these two lines right here. There's one bolt here that holds it up. And uh, the other seal goes between, I don't know if I can see it or not, but it kind of goes between the uh, transmission and body and, and the body of that thermostat. And that's just a single aluminum uh, type gasket with some uh, silicone adhered to it. And there's one bolt that holds it on right there on the side right over here. So it's not that hard to take off um, if you have to take it off. But uh, I'm going to get the tools here and start taking it apart and we'll be back with you. Okay, here's the uh, thermostat, transmission cooler thermostat uh, bypass. And there's actually five pieces in There's two O-rings and three metal pieces. Okay. And it comes with instructions. So this here is the part number for it. It's Transgo is the brand name. And here is the sheet that takes you through the procedure to install it. And I'll uh, I'll put a link to this uh, in my description. But this here kind of goes through and explains uh, what you have to do. And here's the back side with the rest of the procedure. So it's not really very tough to put in, it's pretty straightforward. And the newer O-rings are there for, uh, for resealing everything, for the cap and, and all that. So, All right, so we're going to get started on this. You want to have a drain pan handy here because there's going to be some oil coming at you. And see if we can get that out. Oop, there it flew. I think it went up in the belly pan. I'll get that a little bit later. And you'll probably want to have a small vice grip. Okay, on the nose of that plug, I've clamped on a, a small vice grip. And we can wiggle that out. And there's gonna be fluid in there. So what I might do is I might spray a little penetrating fluid on there to help it come out a little easier. Because again, if you got rolled salt in your area, it can be in there pretty tight. There it's coming. There it is. Okay. There we go. So, right there is the wax pellet that we remove. That does not get reused. And then, let's see, I got this 
needle nose pliers here. There's a little uh, there's a little clip right here that we have to pull out. Gotta see how hard that's gonna come out. Okay, and there's a spring behind it. So that gets tossed. And also that spring there gets tossed along with that little rubber piece. Okay, and then I've got an O-ring pick sitting here. Let me grab that. And we'll take out this snap or this O-ring right here. That doesn't get put back. And then there's a new one to replace this in the kit. So this is your main seal for that cap, and that one will get replaced. Okay, so grab me a rag here. I don't believe, let's see what else we got in there. I think that's it, if I remember right. I'm going to take a quick look at the instructions here again, just to make sure. So yeah, I think we got everything out and tossed it needs to be. So there we go. So the next thing is we're going to get ready to put her back together. And I'm going to get all the parts here and lay them out on a paper towel. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is put this on, this O-ring right here. And you can either use some of that old oil or some grease, whichever you want. And that gets put right on right there. Okay, now I see there's a spring hanging around up there too. I think that one gets tossed, if I remember right. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, there's two springs. So that second spring comes out too. That's a little bit longer one. That's clear in the back. Okay, so this piece goes in. And we've got this little uh, brass piece right here. They kind of go together and they get put in and, and you got to shove them all the way to the back. And right there that is. Okay. And we have an O-ring right here that goes on that uh, cover. Where did I go? There it is. Okay, we're going to get a little oil on that. And that O-ring replaces the uh, main seal on that cover. Okay. Then we got this. It's got a hole in it for that brass piece. And it's just got a blank end. The blank end goes in like that. Okay. And being horizontal, I gotta see if I can get that brass piece to seat where I want it to. I believe I just did. Yep, there it is. Okay. So right there, the kit is in. Now, I've got to put that snap ring in. So right here is the snap ring, and we'll put that in, and we'll be done with this. It's really pretty straightforward and simple. It's nice when it's a horizontal one. You don't have to take the whole thing out. Let's see if I got it in there all the way. I think I do. Yeah, it's in the groove. Okay, now it's just a matter of cleaning it up a little bit. And that's it for that bypass. So now the flow will be up to the cooler and back all the time. Okay, we're gonna start draining this out. Right here is the check plug. And uh, I just wanted to make note, when you do check the fluid level, the vehicle needs to be level. So if you jack up the front end, you gotta jack up the back end the same amount. I have all four wheels on ramps of the same size, so we're all set. But this will drain down to this point on the pan. And with the uh, engine running, when we get all done, that's where the fluid will be dribbling out of with the engine running at, you know, around 110, 113 degrees right in that range. So we're going to take this out first and drain out as much as we can, and we'll start taking the bolts out on the pan. And this can't be checked with the engine off because uh, when you shut the engine off, all the fluid that's circulating in the transmission goes back to the pan 
and it floods this hole. So when you start up the transmission, the fluid level drops down because it's circulating. Now there's one bolt right here on top of the exhaust. You're going to need a uh, you're going to need a universal joint to get on. So we're going to take that one out first because that's the biggest uh, or hardest one I should say to get out. Okay, the rest of them I believe we can get straight on. There might be one over here I need to yet. And there's one more thing we need to take down while this is draining. And there's a heat shield right over here. There's a catalytic converter right here. And that's to keep heat from that transmission. And there's actually three bolts on it, okay? There's one right here on the side. And uh, we're gonna get a different angle on this, but we're gonna show dropping this pan down because the fill plug is right over here underneath this heat shield as well. So there's actually two bolts you can take out and then you can kind of rotate it down out of your way. You don't have to take it completely down. So while this is draining, we're gonna reposition and uh, get you a better shot and better angle at it. Okay, the first bolt's on the side here. It's a 10 millimeter head. And I believe they put some blue Loctite on, so you're not gonna be able to take it out with your fingers. You're gonna have to ratchet it most all the way. I think I got it out far enough or maybe I can get it out. There we go. Okay, yeah, they got blue Loctite on that one. We'll set that one aside. And then there's one up on top, and you almost have to have a flex head ratchet like this one here so you can you can uh, get up there and get on it. It's kind of a booger. It's either that or else you might be able to use a ratchet wrench, but I don't know. I'm gonna try and get this up there and get it on it. It's not just in the best position. But we gotta have that out in order to get it to fill. Go for it. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I'm gonna try just a ratcheting wrench. Let's see what that does. I might be able to get a swing on it with that. Because you can't hurt it, you can't see it from the bottom. Oh man, they got that baby on there tight. Come on, break loose. Oh, come on. Can't get an arm swing in there with a hoop. Try to go forward with it. See if I can do it there. Come on. Mm. The hardest thing is just going to get it broke loose. That's tight. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's not nice. There, I finally got it. I got it in the position where I can start loosening it. It started moving, I think. Come on. Come on. There, it's starting to come, I think. I got just a little bit of play on it. Got it to move just a little. Come on. Okay, I got a flex head 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. I'm gonna try that because then I can bring it down on an angle so I'm hitting the bottom of the cab. So I'm gonna go get that and try it and we'll be back with you. Okay, we got the flex head uh, ratchet wrench 10 millimeter on there. And this baby wants to come out hard too. They must have a lot of Loctite on it. But at least I can turn it now. 
It's going hard all the way. But we'll get her. Okay, I got that top bolt out. It was kind of a long-winded one, but you got to be patient. You'll get it. And uh, what we're going to do, this thing's been driven on a little bit of gravel roads, and before I take anything loose, I'm going to go and blow around here, get this dust off. And right up here, I don't know if we can see it or not, right up here is the fill plug, and I'll show getting that out here a little later. But for right now, I've got this heat shield out of the way so I can get these bolts on the side and get the pan down. And... Uh, Again, I'm going to take a blow gun, just bring a blow gun around and uh, just blow out. Go up around that fill port too because there might be some dust up there. We don't really want it falling in. Kind of hit the dust the so Go around the transmission pan and just blow. If there's any dirt and stuff there, we can kind of get that out of there so it don't fall down in. So the next thing is taking out all the bolts, and I think I've got, let's see, there's one back here that you're going to have to use a universal joint on as well, and uh, here it is. So what we're going to do is take these bolts all down kind of from the front first and work our way to the back because this is going to tip down there's going to be oil coming out, and uh, have your drain pan there and ready to go. She is starting to come down already. Okay. Keep your bolts all in one place so you don't lose them. And I'm going to work on the back side here. Take that down. There we go. Now, let's see if we can get this sneak that snuck out of here without too much trouble. At least the ways that's the plan. I might have to unseat that gasket to get it out because I need the clearance because they have it so stinking close to that exhaust. Let's see what I can do here. And they may have changed design here in this 19. I did an 18 and I was able to uh, sneak that pan out. I'm betting on this one we can't. I might have to clean it in place, which I had to do that before too. Let's see what's holding me. This might be a clean in place because I'm not taking the exhaust down. Right here is the uh, Right here's the filter. Put that down, see if I can pull it out. Okay. Get my filter out of the way so I can see back in there a little further. I'd really like to get the pan out, but with GM's engineering, I don't know that we're going to be able to. It's really a dumb design. So there the filter is out. Now I can see back there and see what's stopping. And <laughs> I don't believe we're going to get it out. In fact, I know we're not. And that's all right. I will clean it in place. GM created loads of fun on this one. Okay, I've wiggled that, uh, that old gasket out. 
And now before I start cleaning the pan, I'm going to clean up this flange up here on top. And just make sure that if there's any dirt there, I can clean it out in the pan when I clean the pan. I'll go all the way around that whole thing and then this top flange here as well and get that all cleaned up. So that's all ready to go. And then we're going to finish emptying out this. And there's a magnet in here too. I got to find out where that's at. Located on the pan. Oh, I see them in the back. There's two magnets back there that are full of fuzz. I'm going to try and get those out and get those clean. I don't know if they're if they're uh, glued in or if they are free because I think this is an aluminum pan. So I'm guessing they're probably glued in. But I'm going to wipe off as much of the uh, stuff as I can on them, all the fuzz. It's not optimal. I'd like to get that pan out, but they've just got too much junk on the bottom of that valve body to get it out. In 2018, I could sneak it out of there, but it changed a few things in 2019 and up. So. This is the only option I really have because I'm not dealing with that exhaust. Especially if you're in the rust belt, they can uh, get you in the Pandora's box. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to clean it up good all around that flange and we're going to clean out the pan, clean the magnets, put a filter up. Okay, I've got uh, that flange all pretty well cleaned up. I'm just going to bring that oil to the front here as much as I can and just kind of pump it over the front. Get as much of it out as I can, and then I'll take towels and finish it up. I think I got about as much as I'm going to get. Pretty close, anyway. Okay. Okay, I think we're getting to the end of it. Okay, now next thing I'm going to do is try and clean those magnets. The magnets are back kind of right in this area, right in here. One on each side, one about here and one about here. And my head might get in the way here for videoing, but I gotta get in there. There, what I'm doing is wiping across the magnet and getting the metal and the garbage off. I get that dirt load out. You can kind of see what's in there. It's just the normal wear and tear from the break in process. It's a round magnet and it sticks up probably about an eighth to three sixteenths off the bottom of that aluminum pan and it's, it's, uh, it's glued in so you're not going to get them out. But again, you can get most all that crap off. Just be careful of the wires and stuff up in there so you don't pull any of the wires off the solenoids or else you're going to have problems with shifting. Okay. About does it for that one. Now I gotta do the other one. Let's see if I can get in there on this side. Okay, there's the other side. You can see all the junk on it there. Look up in there as much as I can. Yeah, I got that the one on the driver's side is pretty clean after going over it about three times. Really pretty good. 
And the same to the one here in the passenger side. We'll call that good. There, I got some more off. All right, one more. There we go. Okay. Now there's some dripping down. I'm gonna go in there one more time and clean that pan. As much of the bottom of it as I can. Yeah, there's some junk on the bottom of the pan there. You can see it kind of darker stuff. Okay. I'm going to call that good. So, that's about it for cleaning the pan. I'm going to clean up that flange once more because there's still stuff dripping down from above. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get that uh, that new gasket and get ready to put that in. Okay, now we've got everything pretty well cleaned up. I've got the new gasket here. We've got a little bit of seepage out of the tranny there. I'm going to wipe down. But what we have to do is uh, there's only one way that gasket can go in. And right here is a hole in the case. And this right here coincides with it. Okay. And there's one back here at the back passenger side rear as well. Another hole back there. So that, that kind of locates it and kind of holds that gasket in place. And then there's also a couple here. One here and one there. And they go through this hole. There's a little hole here in the front of the pan right there. So getting it back in, it's kind of a manipulation thing. you got to kind of go in. I'm going to do it before we put the uh, filter on. But i got to kind of wiggle it underneath that valve body. And try and get that baby in there underneath everything. Tipping that pan up can help you, but it likes to catch on a lot of stuff. This is a transmission that GM produced that requires patience. Because otherwise you're gonna get very frustrated trying to get things back in. It will go, it's just going to take the right combination. Most of the stuff at the back of that valve body that holds us up. at that back passenger side we got to get under that's the hardest one right down here once we get under that we'll be home free and it goes down in that pan a ways okay there I just slid it under I slid that pan forward and that gave me enough room to get it slid under now we'll go work on that other side and get that in Just got it. Yes, I did. That wasn't too terribly bad. Like I said, there's a solenoid towards the back here. You got to get underneath that. And you're going to have to get your fingers in, move that pan forward. You've got kind of a little well right there, and you can kind of get it worked under. Once you got that one, the rest of it goes pretty good. Okay, now that gasket is pretty well in place. I'm going to get it on the, the pan here. 
and I hope it's not in the way to put the filter in. I'm going to grab my filter. Okay, now, the seal, you don't have to worry about it being up in here because it's kind of captured right here. It's kind of between two flanges. But I'll grab a little bit of that oil and just put that on. And we'll slip that in there. And it's got a little spring on here too. So what that does, that kind of puts a little pressure on it. So when you go together, it's gonna, you're going to feel that when you put the pan up too. So, and get it up and in place. And right there it is. Okay, so the next thing we do is we're going to put that pan up. You can see it's got a little bit of spring to it from that filter spring. We're going to start putting those bolts on. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to go ahead and get all these bolts in. And then we'll begin the torque process. Okay, I'm going to do these two hard bolts first here. We're just going to snug them up with the impact. And uh, just like that. And then we'll finish it up with a torque wrench. Okay, now the first two bolts we're going to hit are those two that are up there above the, the exhaust. And we need about 90 inch pounds of torque on those. 85 to 90 range. So I'm going to do these two first and I'm going to work around and do the rest of them. Okay, when you do the transmission, do the transfer case as well. It kind of gets neglected a lot of times. And it's very simple to do. Um, they've got a drain plug right here and a fill plug right here. And uh, you basically drain it out, put the drain plug back in and fill it up till it comes out of the bottom of this hole here. And that's it. Now when I take out the plugs, one thing that I do, I replace one of the plugs, the drain plug, with a magnetic plug. I'm a dealer for gold plug magnetic plugs. And these plugs are a neodymium magnet. They're very, very strong. And neither of these plugs here, I don't believe they have a magnet on at all. So these uh, gold plugs, they hold on there really good. And the only filter you have in these gearboxes, and that includes your front differential, includes your rear differential, is the magnet. So the magnet from the factory and the front diff and the rear diff is pathetically weak. And uh, once it gets fuzzed over with metal, that pulling that metal out of the oil to protect the bearings, then it can't keep pulling. So you need something stronger, and that's where these uh, gold plugs come in at, because they got that neodymium magnet is really strong. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, and whenever I uh, take the uh, plugs out on these transfer cases, I always take out the fill plug first. And the reason I do that, and again, when you check the level, you want the vehicle, or check the fluid level, you want the vehicle level. Okay? So, you can see the transfer case is hooked up to the back of the transmission. And uh, there's a seal between them. If that seal starts leaking, you can start pushing transmission fluid into the transfer case. And what that'll do is it'll overfill the transfer case, and it'll cut you short on fluid for the transmission and burn up your transmission. So... What I do, got a drain pan here, I take out that fill plug first and see if any fluid comes out at me. And I've had it before, I had a, a Ford that I did, and there was actually two quarts of fluid came out of that fill plug. It was that much over full from the tranny pumping it on in. So I went and checked the transmission, guess what, it was two quarts low. So we had to pull the transfer case out get that new seal put in. So that's just a quick uh, check to see if, if that seal is leaking, if you're not over full. You know, right here, it's just dribbling out. That's the way you want it. Okay. And another thing, if you buy a brand new vehicle like this, those gearboxes go through a break-in process in the first 20 to 30,000 miles, and they give off quite a bit of fine metal. And it's a really good idea to get that fluid out because it's loaded up with that fine metal, and it's going to keep going through your bearings over and over again. You need to get them, get them drained out and get them flushed out. And again, you can see there is no magnets whatsoever on either of those plugs. Okay. So what I'm putting in is the uh, gold plug magnetic plug. And when you go to put it in, these are tapered pipe thread. They're 3 8 pipe thread, so it's on a taper. 
as you go in tighter it seals tighter and you want to put on some uh, some type of uh, thread sealant to help it to uh, seal up better and uh, this here's what I've got that I'm using it's called rector seal so if you want any of the plugs there's actually four available for these Chevrolets the front diff fill the rear diff fill the transfer case drain and the engine drain and they've all got the neodymium magnet on like this does and uh, I try not to get it over the end if I can help it Let's see if I got a paper towel here try to keep it as clean as you can on the end and we're pretty well drained out and we'll put that in I've got to find the right socket to tighten it up and these don't get terribly terribly tight because what will happen is you can actually crack the housing if you try to tighten them too much so I'm gonna get a socket we'll tighten it up and okay I'm snugging this up here and again I'm not getting too crazy with it it's gonna almost bottom out that hex on it but uh, you got the pipe uh, thread sealing on there which helps it to seal also but uh, it's almost flush not quite you can wipe that off and... okay now we're gonna fill it up and I got the pumper here each of these should take right at about two quarts it's usually what they handle Okay, there's one quart. I'm gonna see where we're at. Yeah, it ain't coming out yet. There's about a quart and a half. Okay, so about a quart and a half is enough to get her full. I'm gonna let her dribble there just a little bit. And again, it's the same fluid as the transmission takes, exactly the same. So it looks like about a quart and a half will do it. Alright, I'm going to leave it right there is about where I want it. And we'll torque that down. Again, they don't have to be really, really tight. It's just uh, about right there is where I want it. It doesn't take a whole lot. You don't want to split that case. When you're all done, we'll wipe it down. If you want to spray it off, you sure could. Get rid of any uh, residual oil. But that's it for the transfer case. And that uh, Amzol fluid, um, it's just going to, you can see this stuff was starting to darken somewhat. Not terrible yet, but uh, I've seen them a lot worse. But uh, as it uh, oxidizes and breaks down, it gets darker and darker. But with that Amsoil fluid, you can go easily, probably 150, 200,000 miles on it. Just let the color be your guide. So that's it for the transfer case. Like I said, don't take long. Do it with the transmission, and, and you're done for a while. Okay, we got uh, the pan back on and all torqued, and uh, we're gonna pull this this heat shield down far enough here so we can get at the uh, get that plug. And uh, this plug here has uh, it's two parts. Got a top part here, you can kind of see me spinning it. There's a bottom part that's kind of a sleeve down inside the aluminum housing. And that's where the dipstick really should be at, so you can check your fluid easily, but we don't do that anymore. So, what I use is a needle nose, small needle nose. You could probably use a screwdriver too, but what you're doing is you're picking up on that, just like that. Okay? Once you get that up, that relieves the pressure on that sleeve, that rubber sleeve, and you can work it out. Just kind of give it a twist there. Okay. It's a little stubborn. There it comes. Okay, so there it is. Okay. So we'll clean that up, and when we're all done, we'll put it back in, and then this, uh, this center gets pushed back in just like that.
that's what holds it in. All right. So there's the plug. Now, what you can do is uh, you can get some half inch, I believe it's half inch OD nylon tubing or uh, poly tubing at your Menards or Lowe's or Home Depot and run it in here and then go up into the engine compartment and you can put a funnel on it and fill it that way if you have to. I've got a pumper, but not all of you are going to have a pumper. <clears throat> And I took out uh, probably about six quarts, maybe close to seven. I'm going to put about that much back in to do the flush. And see if I can get that baby wrestled in there. Come on, get in there. There it is, right there. Okay, I'll start putting fluid in. Now, if any of you are interested in using the AMZO products, I can set you up with a wholesale account. Uh, just please contact me, or if you want any of the gold plugs for your truck, the magnetic plugs, i um, be happy to, to get those for you. But uh, the AMZO wholesale account saves you 20% off the retailer online price, and you buy as little as, you, as much as you want from AMZO. And uh, anything over 100 bucks ships to you for free. But uh, if you're interested in that, uh, that helps me out, especially with the YouTube channel, because I get a small commission off of what you buy, and uh, you deal direct with Amazon to ship to your door. So be happy to help anybody with that that uh, is interested. Okay, right there, seven and a half. We'll stop right there, and I'm just going to leave that hang right there. Because that's, uh, I'm going to have to add some later after I do the flush. So, the next thing is I'm going to show you how to perform the flush and where to do that at. Okay, these here are your cooler lines, right? Here's your transmission pan. And we got to take, uh, it'll be this one that goes to the rear. That's the return from the cooler. So we're going to put a hose, we're going to pull this out of that block. And we're going to put a hose on it and uh, run it to the drain pan. But we need to loosen up this uh, keeper right here for those two lines and uh, pop that baby out. There it is. And then there's another one right back here. Uh, pop that one down, just like that. Okay, and then we've got a 10 millimeter bolt here that we're gonna take out, 10 millimeter head. Okay, and take out this there's only one way this can go in because this hole is not quite dead center so we got a drain pan here gonna pull that out because there's going to be some fluid coming at us and then up inside is o-ring okay we don't want to lose that o-ring so we're going to take that out there it is i'm going to set that somewhere safe okay and then we're going to put this back on with just that single line And we'll just snug it up just a little bit. Okay. So with that uh, thermostat bypassed, we should have flow going through here. And then coming up through the cooler and then back to the tranny here. So I'm going to capture it here with a hose. And the hose I'm using, it's a half inch ID heater hose. And that will work real well. And slip over that. Grab it here. You can get that at any auto parts store. So I'm going to come up here by the exhaust, do a kind of a gooseneck here. And bring it on down. Okay. And there's a kind of a flange right there. We're going to go over that flange. That'll hold that hose on really good for me right there. Okay, so we have the transmission full of fluid. And uh, we're now ready, just about, to do this flush. I'm going to get the hose routed where I need it. <clears throat> I've got a pan under here. <clears throat> I've got the end of the hose going to the pan. And uh, 
<clears throat> now when we start it up, we're going to put it into reverse and we're going to put it into drive and that'll get a couple of gears. It'll get the low gear and it'll get the reverse uh, clutches. It'll get some fresh fluid to them. And we'll do that like once or twice while we're flushing it and then uh, when I see a nice color change, we'll stop. There may be some coming out right here. Um, we'll see how that works, but uh, I think most of all it's going to come out of this hose. So we're going to go ahead and start it up. Okay, now I ended up plugging that hole as much as I could with my finger, but I believe we've got a good majority of that old fluid out. That's what's frustrating with these GM trannies, they keep changing things and making it harder and harder to service them. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to add some more fluid and we're going to try flushing once more. Okay, now I've got my finger stuck in that one hole so I don't lose fluid out of there. We're going to go until we see a nice color change out of here. And I put in another seven quarts is what I did. Go ahead and start it up. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's looking really nice. I like that. Okay, I'll wipe down some of this oil here that we spilled. And I'll take this bolt down. And then we're gonna get our O-ring. And put that back on the snout there. And push that right up in just like that. And I'm going to wipe this off, get as much of that oil down there as I can. Not a real fun transmission to do, but if you want to get ahead of the shutter, the Amsoil fluid will do it. And then you won't have to do it for a long time again because the Amsoil fluid does not break down like the other fluids. Now, I gotta see which way this has got to go in. Make sure I got my hole lined up. And no, got it in the wrong way. Got to go the other way. There it is. And this little bolt here is the same as the transmission bolt, so you're looking at probably about 90 inch pounds. And there we go. Okay, so that is all buttoned up. The only thing you might want to do is, if you spill a little bit, spray it down. Use some brake clean solvent, that would work pretty well. I got a couple little drips up here from some that sprayed a little on me. Get everything clean and dry so you know if you got a leak or not. Wipe off the cat because it's going to smoke when it starts. Okay, now the next thing we do is we're going to fill the transmission. Okay, we're going to take out that plug, and also, let's see if there's any fluid in there, might be, 
Yeah, there is. Okay. You can see how nice that fluid looks. It's a nice, nice cherry red. Okay. The other thing is we want to button up these uh, clips over here too. Just push it up in. Ah, there it goes. One right there. Okay, so the cooler lines are all done. Now, <clears throat> as long as the fluid is running out of that check port, then we're good to start it. So when you start it, just let it, don't put it into gear, just let it run. And the level of oil is going to drop as we start it up because it's going to be sucking out of the pan. So right now the level's up above where the checkpoint is. That's why when I take it out, it runs out. But as soon as you start it up, the pump's going to start sucking out of the pan and that level's going to drop. So once that level drops after it's run for a few seconds, we're going to take this plug back out and we're going to fill it again until it runs out again. Okay. And then we're going to let it warm up to uh, we get up to that 95 to 113 degrees on that tranny temp. And then uh, we'll check the level again. We want it just dribbling out of here. So, with that being said, go ahead and start it up. So it gets down to a dribble. Go ahead and put it in gear. I just add a little bit there just to make sure I'm full enough. Okay, back and park. Okay, so right there is park. I'm gonna let it sit there and run. starting to go down to a drip almost. I'm going to go ahead and put that plug back in for now. We're going to let it run and get it warmed up, then we'll recheck it again. So right now that level's right here at the, at the that notch right there in the pan. That's the level check. Okay, I got it running. Um, you can go to the transmission filter, or not transmission filter, but transmission fluid. Uh, using the uh, scroll here You can uh, find it by scrolling through there and right now we're at 82 degrees I'm gonna do just a little bit of power braking and bring it up to the temp that I want and uh, Put it in reverse and try that Now go back to uh, park let it up, do that a few times, it'll help put some heat in that uh, transmission fluid so we can get it to the temp we want to uh, test it. But we want uh, 95 to 113 degrees to check it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just do a little power braking and get it. Uh, there, we're up to 84. You see it jumped up to 84. Give it about 10 seconds of power braking. That generates quite a bit of heat in that uh, torque converter net. It just dissipates out and we can get that temperature up. It's right about 86. So we're gonna do that a few times here to get, uh, there it's up to 88. That heat is kind of coming through out of the torque converter. We got a little bit coming out at us. Down to the point where it's going to start to dribble. And again, this check is done at the vehicle level.
So right there, we're starting to dribble. That's where I'm going to leave it. Now we're going to put that uh, check plug in and it gets torqued to 80 inch pounds. There it is. Okay, shut it off. Alright, now we've got the fluid level where we need it. Um, the only thing I gotta button up yet is we gotta put that plug in and then them two bolts. So that's pretty much about it. And then we're gonna take it for a test drive. So that's about it for this uh, transmission flush. Um, I'm gonna see how much fluid I use. Okay, I'm at about 13 and a half quarts. And then I also use about a quart and a half above and beyond that for the transfer case. So if you wanna do both of them, you're looking at uh, about 15 quarts. Right in that range, that's about what I'd have on hand. We took it for a test drive after we got this flush all completed and the uh, shutter is gone. So it's a lot of work to go through to get rid of the shutter, but uh, it certainly makes that transmission shift a whole lot better. And it's gonna make it last a lot longer as well. That transmission fluid that we put in there at Amsoil, you'll be hard pressed to find anything that'll outperform it. I've had excellent luck with it for the last 20 plus years. I've been doing transmission flushes on all brands of vehicles. So use it in confidence. I want to thank you again for watching my video. Have a great day.